Well, hello. Welcome to the next installment of my YouTube channel. Today's episode is on Laser Speckle. Any of you old enough to remember old-style analog televisions, uh, you probably recognize this. This is what actually used to be called snow. If you tuned your television to some channel that uh, wasn't transmitting, uh, you got what essentially looks like um, random noise. It was So it was called static or snow. But these patterns can also be generated by shining a laser pointer on a rough surface and then letting that scattered light uh, shine on a distant wall. Uh, and if you look at the patterns of bright and dark on that distant wall, you essentially get the same pattern. And so this is what is known as laser speckle. So in this YouTube video, what I really want to do is, is describe how to generate uh, computer uh, generated speckle. And, the, and these are ways of simulating speckle. Uh, and you can use that to uh, either analyze uh, real data or, or to simulate the data that will come out of experiments. And so this is uh, a closer look of what's known as dynamic speckle. And so this is a speckle pattern which is changing in time. For instance, if you shine that laser pointer not on a, a rough wall or a static wall, uh, but actually on living tissue, then you're more likely to see something like this. Inside living tissue, everything is moving. Uh, and so all the scatterers are, are uh, scattered light are adding randomly and it's producing what's known as dynamic speckle uh, in a process called dynamic light scattering. So what we want to do is take this final frame and just sort of look at it qualitatively. And so what we see are these, these patches of, of high intensities and, and other patches of low intensities. And so what we want to do is to be able to uh, create computer programs that can generate or simulate this, these kinds of patterns. And so what we want to do is to try to understand how to, um, how to generate those. And so this is really about computer generating speckle patterns. So one, one viewpoint is that you can produce a, a random a pattern of, of uh, high intensities and low intensities uh, just simply by adding together a bunch of sinusoids. And these are sinusoids of different spatial frequency, different orientations, different amplitudes. And so if we just take a look at this process, so here we've added two, and then three, and then four, five, six. And so we're just adding more and more of these uh, sinusoids. And they all have these random uh, periodicities and random orientations and phases and amplitudes. And as they all add up, we start to see that the pattern on the right uh, starts to look random. And so it's, it's really just a summation of a, of a bunch of, of random sinusoids, but it's a Fourier approach. If we were to do a Fourier uh, decomposition or a fast Fourier transform, or, or if we took a spectrum of that pattern, then in fact we would get the distribution of all those sinusoids that went into it. But that, that's a non-localized approach in the sense that uh, the sine waves extend off to infinity, but we could also take a localized approach. And this is, um, is very much thinking in terms of the emitting region uh, as being a series of patches, and there's big patches and small patches, uh, and so you can have these localized functions that are all added together. And we can see that we're starting with the low frequencies and we're going to higher spatial frequencies, but these are all what are called point spread functions. Uh, and these are all adding together and random amplitudes and phases and locations. And we see that we again can develop a, uh, a random distribution of high intensities and low intensities on the right here. So that's, uh, these are two-dimensional speckle patterns, and so if you shine a laser pointer on a rough surface and if you look at the uh, scattered light on a, on a distant wall, uh, you'll see brights and darks more or less that look like this. But uh, laser speckle uh, also comes from a three-dimensional process in which light is interacting with an inhomogeneous medium. And so what I'm going to show here is a simulation of a light pulse and so this is free space on this side, this is free space over here, and then inside here, this is an inhomogeneous medium. And so I, I'm not actually showing the refractive index uh, variations, but, but this is, is essentially has a mottled uh, refractive index pattern. And so we can let this thing propagate, and we can see that this, these perfect wave fronts are actually getting uh, distorted. A lot of scattering going on. And so as this pulse moves through this inhomogeneous medium, and so we could take a, a linear cross-section somewhere, let's say here, and what we would get would be two-dimensional speckle. 
but it's actually coming from these scattered waves. And so let me just let me just play that again. It's just kind of fun to watch. Uh, this is a finite difference time domain simulation. Uh, at the at the tailing end or trailing end of the pulse, it's it's like there's all this this noise going on, and it's actually uh, it looks like it's almost like boiling. Um, now there's also let's let's actually look at a continuous laser beam, and so this is now a continuous beam. It's a little bit easier to see what's happening to the light when you have the continuous beam, and so you see the the beam propagating through the the medium. Here it exits the medium, and so this is free space again over here. But what you notice is that the beam actually break, breaks up into what are essentially filaments. And so these are three-dimensional filaments. And again, we can take a, a two-dimensional cross-section out here. And what we'll get is then the two-dimensional speckle pattern. But what's actually happening is that the, the plane is intersecting this very complicated uh, three-dimensional filament pattern. So just playing that one more time. You get a real sense of how that, that beam fragments as it travels through the inhomogeneous medium. This is roughly what happens to starlight as well. When starlight comes through the atmosphere, uh, there's all the, the fluctuations in the atmosphere, and it, uh, and it aberrates the, uh, the beam. And this is why you have to have adaptive optics or, or put telescopes in space. So one thing that we are doing with Speckle uh, is, is shining laser beams on uh, living tissue. And so uh, th this is actually a CCD chip. You're looking at intensities on a CCD chip, and this is a uh, infrared laser that is uh, reflecting or scattering off of living tissue. Uh, we're also doing holography, uh, and so these are these stripes here. So these are actually holographic fringes. Um, and so all this dynamic motion is actually caused by uh, all the motions going on inside a living tissue. So everything's in motion. The mitochondria are moving, the nucleus is moving, the cells are moving around. Uh, and so as they scatter light, they produce this, uh, this snow. But there's a lot of information in here. For instance, one very simple thing we can do um, is look at the difference between living tissue uh, and tissue that has been uh, hit with a, uh, with a poison. And you can see that in the living tissue, there's all this activity going on. Uh, in the dead tissue, you see a little bit of, the, of uh, shimmering on the outside. That's actually just the stability of our, of our system. But in this way, we are able to tell uh, the difference between, in this case, living and dead tissue. But more importantly, we can look at the difference between living tissue and unhealthy tissue or tissue responding to drugs. And, and it's one of the ways that you can extract information from speckle.